Hi guys, welcome back to Folk Rock Farm. Today I'm going to bring you along with me to pick some of my chamomile I have growing here. And I'm also going to show you how I dry it and how I prepare it for tea. Chamomile has an extraordinary amount of benefits. It's actually been called a panacea of herbs, meaning it's a cure-all. It can heal a lot of different ailments. Um, so it's a great herb to grow, to have around, to store, and to harvest it. It's super simple. You just pluck the heads off just like this. The flowers are definitely the most concentrated medicinal part of the plant. So that's what I'll be harvesting today. You want to look for flowers that are nice, fully opened, not too damaged. Nice and healthy. And yeah, you just go along and pluck off the ones you like. I'm just putting it on one of my herb drying racks here. It might seem silly, but I, to make harvesting easier, sometimes it's nice to get a belt with a basket or put your tray down on something where it won't get dirty and to use two hands. It might seem silly, but after working on a farm for seven years, um, you realize that every second counts when you're working with your hands and you're doing something actually physical. So if you can use both hands, the idea is you can harvest twice as much. Chamomile has been seriously easy to grow. Um, I started it early this spring, probably in April, just in these little, little pots. After the frost had passed and this was ready to go out, I transplanted it in this bed. And there's several plants here. The one problem I had with my chamomile this year is that it did get covered in aphids um, this early summer. The aphids were mostly right at the tips of these plants here, right underneath the flowers. Uh, there's several things you can do to combat aphids. You can simply just spray them off with your garden hose. People say that if you knock them down, they won't climb back up. Not entirely sure if I fully believe that because an aphid had to make its way up there anyways, but um, that's what they say. You can put cayenne pepper in there. You can put soapy water in there to kind of help battle them. Um, you could also even just squish them. They're pretty soft bodied so if you grab a pair of gloves and run your fingers down where they're hanging out you can just squish them. Um, and what I chose to do is actually just went around to all my plants in the garden that had the aphids and just snipped off the portions where the aphids were the most congested, threw them in a trash bag and got them hauled out of here. And ever since I did that our aphid problem has been essentially non-existent. Uh, one or two here and there, but not like they were. These were absolutely covered. So I definitely recommend doing something to control your aphid problems. Uh, when it comes to any pest, you definitely want to try to hit it head on and get a control on it before they start breeding and their numbers get out of hand. Um, it's always best to try to prevent an infestation rather than deal with an infestation. Um, I've also seen a ton of bugs enjoying the chamomile as well, so it's also a great beneficial plant for the garden, as well as being beneficial for the mind, body, and soul. It's quite cute as well. Another cool thing about harvesting chamomile is that the more you harvest the flowers, the more the plant responds by sending out more flowers. So the more you harvest, the more it will continue to bloom throughout the summer. My hope for this patch is that this chamomile, it's not a perennial, it is an annual, but it self-seeds itself pretty easily from what I've read. So at the end of the season I'll let a lot of these flowers actually go to seed and drop their seed here. And then I'm hoping next year I won't have to plant any chamomile, it'll come up itself. And then I'll probably just have to go around and thin it a little bit if it's a little bit too dense. But that's my plan with the chamomile here. So this is the chamomile seed, as you can tell. It is very, very tiny. But this is where it all started. 
So I started my chamomile from this seed right here from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. Um, I ordered it online and um, all the instructions are on the back for you as well. It tells you how deep to plant the, so the seed, how far apart, if it's frost hardy, what temperature. Um, so what I did is I used some really small celled uh, germinating trays and filled it with loose potting soil and just sprinkled the seeds right on top of the soil. You don't want to cover the soil because chamomile actually does require light to germinate. And um, I did it in my pop-up greenhouse outside, I believe it was April, with a heating pad underneath so I could regulate the temperature. Now I don't know if you need to go to these lengths to uh, germinate chamomile, but I've just found that the smaller the seed, it's usually a little bit more finicky than larger seed. Um, so I also put in more seed than necessary, knowing that I would thin some more out later once I knew I got good germination. Um, now if you don't have the tools to seed chamomile yourself, you can go to a local garden center. They usually have chamomile available. And um, if you don't have the garden space to grow chamomile, you can grow chamomile in a pot. So this was the setup I had been using. These are just trays I got online. And they've been working fine to dry out some of my flowers. But I figured today I will try the dehydrator and with the dehydrator I can do a lot more flowers at once and because this has a built-in fan and it can regulate the temperature it'll actually dry these out much quicker than just leaving them on a screen um, either way is fine so whatever you have will work but today I'm gonna see how much quicker I can get my chamomile flowers to dry using the dehydrator. So with my flowers all set to go in the dehydrator, I'm just gonna plop the top on and make sure it's set to the herbs and spices, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and get this going. To make my tea, I'm just gonna grab a handful of these flowers that have already dried pretty well. So for brewing the tea, I'm not going to do anything too fancy. Just going to put my crumpled up leaves and or going to put my flowers in my little brewer here, my little tea steeper. And I'm going to put that in some water. And we're going to let that steep for about five minutes. So chamomile has been considered a panacea or a cure-all because of all the ailments it is thought to remedy. The most common ailments being insomnia, anxiety, stress, and it also helps with digestive upset, so it's good for upset stomachs. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antibacterial, and antiviral. So it's just really good for the whole body and it's a gentle herb. Topically, it's also helpful for any mild skin irritations. Um, you can use it in your hair for a hair rinse. I actually use some in my hair today. Um, and it's good for bringing out gold tones in blonde hair. It's honestly just a delicious calming tea for a day after work or if you're having trouble sleeping. It's really good for those things. So without further ado, let's see how it tastes. It's very buttery, very smooth, um, it's really good. If you have ever had chamomile tea before, it's very floral and buttery and calming. It's really good. Alright guys, well that's everything today. Thank you for joining me on this episode of how to make chamomile and how to grow it and how to make it into tea. Until next time.